Hello everybody, this is Gamergar and welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For the purposes of today's video, I'm going to share with yourselves 10 amazing tips that will change the way you farm going forward in Stardew Valley. Let's start with the first tip, the garden pots. Evelyn will give you the recipe to make a garden pot once you have completed the bundles that unlocks the greenhouse in Stardew Valley. The great thing about garden pots is that you can put almost any crop in the game inside them and if the garden pot is placed indoors it doesn't matter what season it is you can grow it in the garden pot let's take a look example for the shed here i have crops in these garden pots that all reproduce so we've got strawberries we've got cranberries we we have blueberries tomatoes we have all different manner of crops and the great thing about this shed is that these crops will always grow back because i put inside them deluxe retaining soil so i never have to come in here with a watering can and water these crops every couple of days i can harvest these pots for huge profits so the best way to use the garden pots in my opinion is to set up sheds all around your farm and fill them up with lovely garden pots the garden pots are very cheap to make you just need clay stone and refined quartz and you can make as many garden pots as you wish the next tip I'm going to share with you today is the benefits of giving fresh food to your animals. The great thing about this is that not only will you save yourself on hay because the animals will always prioritize the grass outside, but they will get more friendship points upon feasting on the grass outside your farm. This has huge benefits, especially if you have a farm that has lots of animals in it. The first great benefit that you're going to get from here is that grass automatically grows back. So you should always leave patches of grass around your farm so that more grass will generate. This will save you a ton of money as we all know hay can become very expensive if you have to purchase lots of it from Marnie. The next tip we're going to talk about here is the Deluxe Scarecrow. Did you know that if you acquire every single rare crow in the game you will receive a recipe in the mail to make a deluxe scarecrow. The reason why the deluxe scarecrow is so great is that it covers twice the amount of tiles than a regular scarecrow. So the regular scarecrows will cover eight tiles. However, the deluxe scarecrow will cover a whopping 16 tiles. This is absolutely amazing. The Deluxe Scarecrow does cost a, a few advanced mats to make, but it's definitely worth it because it means you can place a lot more crops on your farm. The next tip we're going to talk about today are giant crops. Did you know that once specific crops in this game have fully grown, there's a 1% chance every single day after that that they can merge into a giant crop? There's just a few things you need to make this happen. The first is that all crops have to be the same and they all have to be within a 3x3 tree tree tile. The best way, in my opinion, to get yourself a giant crop is to grow your crop and once it reaches full maturity, don't harvest it straight away, especially if it's just only a few days left in that season. Leave the crops there, go to sleep and wait every single day until it merges. This is especially effective on Ginger Island, which if you just have the regular farm, you'll always have a few extra days before the new season kicks in. For example, the cauliflowers here, they waited until the 28th just to get the maximum proficiency. The next thing we're going to talk about are strawberries. As we all know, strawberries are one of the most powerful crops in the game in terms of profit. You can get your hands on strawberries on the 13th during the Egg Festival. But did you know that if you use speaker and strawberries on the same day, you can actually get three harvests instead of two harvests. As we can see, today is the 20th and this is the first harvest that we're going to uh, get with the strawberries. This means that the next harvest will be on the 24th, thus the last harvest will be on the 28th. If you don't utilize the speed grow, what's going to happen is you'll only get two harvests. You can purchase speed grow from Pierre on the 15th, but if you purchase it on the 15th, that won't be enough to get the three harvests on the strawberries. You need to get the speed grow on the day you get the strawberries. There is one great way you can get speed grow, and that's by completing some community bundles. Uh, in the community center and one of the rewards is speed grow now it is only 20 but starting off the, you know that's that's going to be three extra harvests and 20 strawberries which is going to net you a very nice profit the next tip i have for you today is the fact that ducks can swim did you know ducks can swim <laughs> i didn't i only learned this a few weeks ago and i think it's absolutely amazing what we have here are lovely baby ducks and when they grow into fully mature ducks they also swim as well so it's a great aesthetic to the farm 
I have him walled in at the moment just to increase the odds of him jumping into the water. <laughs> Next up we have mixed seeds. Did you know if you plant mixed seeds over in Ginger Island, uh, you can actually get pineapples from them? Pineapples are one of the most profitable crops in the game, especially if you turn it into pineapple jelly, you can get loads of money that way. As you can see here now I have my Ginger Island farm, I've planted loads of mixed seeds. So let's go wait a few days for these mixed seeds to grow and see what we get. As we can see here now, I've gotten a couple of pineapples, which is great. I also got some melons and I got some other bits and pieces. I'm just going to use this site here now to harvest these for the sake of consistency. <laughs> pineapples are absolutely amazing. So because I've gotten so many pineapples, the best thing to do here is to put them into seed makers, get more pineapple seeds and plant more pineapples because the pineapple will reproduce like the strawberry, which means you can have an absolutely huge giant pineapple farm on your ginger island farm and that means a lot more money for you. The next tip we're going to talk about are potatoes. So potatoes can be purchased from Pierre for only 50 gold for one seed. The, the potato is one of the best crops you can plant early on in the game and my advice to you is if you're starting a brand new game and you want to make lots of money buy lots of potatoes because you can get two harvests of potatoes done before you get your hands on the strawberries this is a great way to stock up on strawberries which is selling lots of potatoes <laughs> potatoes potatoes so if you're new to the game and you want to make lots of money purchase potatoes so we're going to sell these potatoes right now and let's see what kind of profits we're going to make. 88 gold for a regular, 110 for a silver star and 132 for the gold. The next tip I have for you today are fibre seeds. Fibre seeds are one of the most underestimated items in the game. Did you know that you can make fibre seeds in winter and you don't even need to water them? It's the best item in the game to stock up on fibre and there's plenty of reasons why you want to get your hands on hundreds and thousands of fibre. To get the fibre seeds recipe, all you have to do is complete the community cleanup special order that Linux will give you. The great thing about fibre seeds is that one seed will give you back an absolute ton of fibre. They only take a few days to grow. Let's harvest all the fibre now and see how much we get. Fibre is used for lots of recipes in the game, including Junimo Huts. And when you reach endgame and you want to make yourself loads of Junimo Huts, one of the most common problems that players run into is a lack of fibre. But this is by far the best way to stock up on tons and tons of fibre. You'll never need fibre again with the amount of fibre that, that you get here that you can grow in winter. Look at the amount of fibre I'm getting here now. And this is just a small patch of fibre. Imagine having a, a, an actual fibre farm. <laughs> How many thousands of fibre could you actually accumulate there's also other great reasons as to why you want to stock up on fiber and we're going to get into that in the next tip and it's probably the, the best tip i have for you in this video and this is why fiber is so underrated but at the same time so overpowered let's talk about grass starter you can purchase the recipe from pierre and to make grass starter all you need is fiber so if you combine the fiber seeds tip with the grass starter tip you'll never have to buy hay again you can plant grass starter in winter you can fill up your whole farm with it and if you have silos you can then use your site and you can fill up your silos with hay absolutely no problem at all but you can also leave the grass out and you can just let your animals feast on it because if you if you go back a few tips i said that when animals feast on grass to get more friendship points so all these tips tie in together you will save thousands of gold by doing these tips because you'll never have to go to marry and buy hay using these methods you'll, you'll always have tons and tons of hay so the best way to go about this the best way to get the most out of this is to build tons of silos plant loads of fiber seeds and stock up on hay so i'm going to leave the video there i hope you enjoyed it I'll upload the next Stardew Valley video in the next day or two, so stay tuned for that. And as always, I hope you have a great day. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified for my future videos. And as always, have a great day.